Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. He didn't have to do this. I don't want to hear my children screaming. I didn't want to hear the gunfire. Forced to relive the trauma video of the Uvalde shooting was leaked. That video was supposed to be released to the victim's relatives Sunday without audio, but some say the families were blindsided by today's leak. We're suffering, and I know the world is suffering too, but these were our babies, our babies that were taken from us. Several investigations continue more than a month after the shooting at Robb Elementary. So far, much of the information has come from lawmakers, witness testimony, and leaked images like that edited video released today by the Austin American Statesman. But the thing is that some families just weren't ready. They're hurt, and they think the way that the video was released without them being warned was wrong. Leticia Hernandez is one of those people. She is the aunt of Jackie Casares, and she wrote a statement on her Facebook page where she asked, quote, how can they do that without thinking of the family first? This, of course, all comes on the same day Uvalde held a city council meeting. The night team's Lee Waldman was there as parents faced Uvalde's mayor. So, Lee, tell us, what is the mayor saying about that leaked video? Well, there were heated and explicit words shared by the mayor and by community members in regards to that video leaked before those families could get a chance to see things first. But some were calling for that anger to be redirected at law enforcement and the response that was shown on the video. Unbelievable. 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 Heated back and forth today at the Uvalde City Council meeting, just hours after the Austin American Statesman release of hallway video from inside Robb Elementary. You see the gunman come in and hear the gunshots. They don't even relive that. They, they've been through a lot. And that was the most chicken way to put this video out today. His remarks were echoed by other councilman Ernest W. Chip King III. He came up to all media members asking if anyone was with the Austin American Statesman. King also critical of the release before families could privately see it. They did that for ratings and they did that for money. And that's the only reason they didn't put that out there. What about the cops? Are they that second voice you heard was that of Adam Martinez. He's a father of two, including an eight-year-old who is inside of Robb Elementary on May 24th. Martinez spoke with us privately, even more critical of what he saw of law enforcement response inside of the hallway. The video showing officers with ballistic shields and tactical gear wading back, even getting hand sanitizer before breaching the classroom and shooting the gunmen. Anybody see them do a good job? Just because they tried to go in there, was that good enough? Was that good enough for the people that were bleeding out? That wasn't good enough. In light of the video's release, despite the best efforts by Uvalde District Attorney Christina Mitchell Busby to block it, we tried to ask for a comment outside of her office. Ms. Busby, just a brief comment or a statement regarding the video released today on the Austin American Statesman inside of Robb Elementary. While the release of the video took much of the attention at City Council tonight, the vote to accept Uvalde CISD Police Chief Pete Arredondo's resignation from City Council was met with cheers. Motion carries. Tonight, Mayor McLaughlin said that families would still be met with and shown that video on Sunday as they were originally planned. It would be done in private. Two hours after that, he says the video would officially be released to the public. Live in Uvalde, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Lee, thank you. So the question is what now? Now that the video has been released and the victims' families have seen it, some of them, one parent is asking, what happens next? There was a failure at every level and, you know, the videos, uh, I'm sure, are going to shed light to that. But when, when does the accountability start? That, that's what we want to know. Uh, who's going to be held responsible and, and when is it going to start happening? You just heard from Vincent Salazar. He's Leila Salazar's father. And he says that it's time for investigators to release all the information about what happened during that shooting. And we continue, of course, getting more reactions. State Senator Roland Gutierrez calls the video's sudden release appalling. He says that families were to follow the story on KSAT.com.
Back here at home, San Antonio police working a shooting case involving these officers say they were just four and nine years old and both were grazed by bullets while waiting for a fruit cup. It happened west of downtown near South Laredo and South Trinity streets. One woman at the fruit stand nearby was shaken up by the news. I mean, you saw me, I grabbed my daughter right away. It, it's because it's, now it's like you can't even take your own kid to go get a fruit cup. Both those young boys are expected to survive their injuries. Police are trying to fix fired those rounds. Investigators spoke with a few witnesses and are hoping to take a look at surveillance video. Tonight, new details into that fire PS energy substation. The utility is saying the investigation continues, but right now it believes the flames were part of equipment failure. They say it's not uncommon for electrical equipment to have a service issue and fail from ongoing use, just like any part of a car. This happened yesterday near Pyron and Hancock on the city's south side. Now, CPS Energy says that it knocked out power to almost 5,000 people. The utility says that its system notified them of the problem, so it took the equipment offline so that firefighters could fight the flames. That outage lasted 48 minutes during yesterday's triple digit heat. You know that was torture, Sarah. We're just hoping that we're not going to hit records anytime soon. Well, you know, unfortunately, we're going to continue our triple digit streak. And this July has been relentless when it comes to the heat. In fact, what you're looking at right now is every single day in July, we've had 12 of them has been at or above 100 degrees, particularly these, this last stretch of a few days here has been even hotter. Temperatures above 104 every single day. We reached 105 today. That is 12 consecutive days at or above 100 degrees. So what's up with the weather? What are we going to talk about? Well, there are some storms out to the west. So coming up, I'll show you the radar. I'll track those storms. They are starting to fall apart across the hill country and Edwards Plateau, but the 100 degree heat is going to continue for the foreseeable future. With that being said, very few over the next coming days will actually win the rainfall lottery. So we'll talk about those small rain chances. Take a look at the radar right now and of course talk about our triple digit heat. I'll have that forecast in just a few minutes. Stephanie. So Sarah, here's the thing. You know, the heat isn't bad news for everybody. It's actually been good for some businesses. We're going to hear from them and look at places where you can cool off. That is coming up in less than 10 minutes. But first, a defender's update now on the Schertz Police Department and its evidence room. Tonight, Schertz Police says an administrative error led to evidence being destroyed. They say an outside consultant began working with police department staff to clean out that room back in January. But investigators learned proper procedure was not being followed. The error impacted 1,376 cases from 2007 to 2018. Those cases are from Bear, Comal, and Guadalupe counties. The city of Shirts says so far none of the cases were related to open or pending criminal cases and that 40% of the evidence had already met the statute of limitations. Right now, staff at Shirts Police Department not facing any criminal violations, but attorneys in Bear, Comal, and Guadalupe counties now looking through this review to make sure it's accurate. Tonight, mixed reaction from families from Pleasanton ISD after a school and the district police department were broken into. The suspects and the weapons they're accused of stealing are now in custody. And as the night team's John Paul Barajas learned, the district's police chief is just four days into his job. It's insane. This was not just a simple school break in. This was a mass security breach where deadly weapons were taken. Pleasanton ISD police say someone broke into their building and stole weapons from their gun cabinet and evidence locker on July 7th. It's the second break in at a Pleasanton ISD building in less than a month. It's left some residents uneasy, while others say they have faith in the district department. I, I think that the district is well aware of we've had issues and they are trying to take care of it. For things to um, be stolen of that nature is I mean, it makes a question of the security of our school system. District Police Chief Michael Gilbert says two men were able to break the lock off two exterior doors with a crowbar. Once inside, they stole a department issued AR-15 and shotgun, as well as a handgun and a long rifle from an evidence locker. The chief says the weapons from evidence are from a year and a half old case. So why were there guns here on the Pleasanton campus in the so, police department? So we do have an active police department here where we store evidence. All weapons have been recovered. Uh, thank God nobody was hurt with them. With the new police uh, officer on deck, just started working, so I think that will be taken care of. 
A district police chief tells us the people responsible were caught just hours after the theft and they are now behind bars and are facing multiple felony charges. Meanwhile, the chief is on his fourth day on the job. He says his department now has a 12 gun safe where they'll be keeping their weapons. That includes also the weapons in evidence. He hopes the next thing they can get is steel plated doors for added security. In Pleasanton, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. John Paul, thank you. Now coming up, yes, my friends, we know that he is real. Still, still ahead on the night beat, the businesses that are booming from this heat wave. And also, if you're looking for a way to cool off the whole family, just stay tuned. Plus, you may have seen these images online already. Tonight, we are taking a look at the telescope that captured a snapshot of the galaxy. What this technology could mean for the future. Also improving security at the border, the U.S. and Mexico, they reached a deal. Why Mexico now putting up more than a billion dollars to help. It's next on The Night Beat. There's a new border deal. Mexico's president agreed to spend $1.5 billion to improve what's being called smart border technology. And he met with President Joe Biden today in Washington. The Associated Press is reporting that the two agreed to create a plan to form joint patrols from Mexico and Guatemala to stop human smugglers along their shared border. They also discussed increasing the number of U.S. work visas. That's something that local Republican Congressman Tony Gonzalez says that he wants to. Now, both our and Mexico's president also spoke about the migrant, migrant tragedy in San Antonio. They said that both countries should help each other and increase opportunities for legal immigration. Now to a view that is out of this world. The Southwest Research Institute says this is a snapshot of our universe millions of years ago, and it could help us find life on other planets. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope took the photos, and it's able to show us objects hiding behind other objects, giving a much clearer image. This is going to be a huge leap uh, for our understanding of the universe. And, um, you know, 20-something years ago, we didn't know for sure that there were planets around other stars. And now we can see them with JWST. Southwest Research Institute says the photos will help in their effort to assist NASA with a mission to Jupiter's moon in 2024. So let's go back to the heat because not everybody's complaining about it. It's actually been pretty good for businesses that make their bank when temperatures rise. The night team's Patty Santos shows us the spots that thrive in the heat. It's so, so hot. In Texas, the summer cool off starts with paletas. When it's like um, 100 degrees or 103, they begin to come. Here at El Paraiso Ice Cream Shop on Fredericksburg, inflation forced them to raise their prices to 60 cents. Owner Maria Elena Flores is counting on customers during this big heat wave. Then it's too slow in the winter. Further out on the west side at Los Cocos, people are hoping to refresh with fruit cups or agua frescas. People um, come out after they get off work and they bring their families and the kids. They get mangonadas, they get fresas con crema. But the only thing hotter than the San Antonio weather has been the box office. These cup holders will keep your drinks cool at Santicos at West Lakes. And that little blue light means that it's starting to get cold. You actually feel it. With temperatures around 68 degrees inside, you might even need a blanket. We sell blankets. This is one of our most popular items during the summer. It's so hot, but when you come in here, it's so cool. You'll definitely need gloves at the Ice and Golf Center at Northwoods. Right now, it's probably around 55 to 45 in the summer. It stays around there. In the winter, it gets even colder. The general public can cool off their feet between 12.30 and 3 p.m. daily for about $14 per person. For these businesses, when the mercury drops, their summer boom sizzles. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. I'm, I'm, I got to tell you, I was excited when I saw the ice. Yeah. All right, now I'll tell you, this is one place where you can go where you don't have to pay a thing, and that is the Pearl. They actually have a splash pad they during do. the daytime where you can go and take the kiddos for them to cool off. Just something to keep in mind as we continue to deal with this very cold weather. Very hot weather. 
I wishful thinking. Yes. Wishful thinking there, Stephanie. How's yes. this? I was thinking about the ice skating rink that we saw. Yeah. <laughs> a chilly 105 today for yes. the high temperature. Ah. <laughs> we got up to 105. That beat the record set back in 1933, 89 years ago of 103 for the day. Our third day in a row of record breaking temperatures elsewhere. It got up to 108 in Del Rio, got up to 109 in Catula, 107 in Pleasanton, 107 in New Braunfels, 103 in Kerrville, Rock Springs. They really beat the heat today. High temperature of 99 out there. I want to talk for a moment because we are seeing some showers and thunder showers on the radar even this late, mainly across the hill country right now. And what we could do is we can actually zoom in uh, to areas across Kendall County. Just near Sisterdale right now, we're seeing a quick downpour. Really, honestly, Fredericksburg, though, getting a good drink of water with plenty of lightning out there as well. Near Mountain Home, just seeing some lingering showers. We'll go ahead and switch over to the radar closer to Del Rio, and we can see this cluster of storms in uh, southern Edwards County a little bit better. It's across ranch land right now, but it is going to be moving to the southwest. Unfortunately, Del Rio, that's going to fall apart before it reaches you. But, you know, there were some lucky few folks who who actually won the rainfall lottery today, mainly around San Antonio. That was south of uh, San Antonio in Southern Bear County, right there near uh, just to the north west of Elmendorf. Some areas got a little bit of rain, a good drink of water across Bandera County and Kerr County as well. But it really is going to be a lottery when it comes to the rainfall over the next few days. 10 to 20 percent chance in the afternoons. That's about it. It's still 95 degrees outside right now, and it still feels like it's close to 100 because of high humidity. Southeast winds at about 14 miles per hour. Now, early tomorrow morning, there will be a few clouds, but a lot like today, between the hours of 3 p.m. and 8 p.m., one or two pop up thunder showers. Our chance for rain in San Antonio is only 10 percent. So if you do get a shower, buy a lottery ticket because that's a pretty low chance there for some thunder showers, but it is possible only 10% chance. Otherwise, it's going to be another hot day. 104 in San Antonio for the high temperature, 103 Seguin, 104 in New Braunfels, 103 Floresville, 100 in Holotus, 100 in Hondo, 104 rather in Hondo, 104 in Yavaldi, 101 in Comfort. Waking up early tomorrow at 80 degrees, so it's going to be a warm start to the day. Mostly sunny and 94 around lunch, 104 for that high temperature, 10% chance for a stray thunder shower. Variable winds at 5 to 10. So will you win the rainfall lottery? Here's your chances over the next few days. Only 10% tomorrow, only 20% on Thursday. Not a great rain chance over the weekend and only 20% on Monday. Otherwise, otherwise it's going to be at or above 100 over the next seven days. So we're going to continue our triple digit streak over the next few days. If only we talked about streaks and hotness when we talked about the Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> they could use a streak other than a losing streak when it comes to their summer league play. When we come back, we'll show you that they went down again last night. Will they be able to rebound? They have one scheduled game left. That will be on Thursday. You'll hear from the Spurs and the San Antonio World Champion is on the Canelo card coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs are winless in Las Vegas after dropping their third straight game in the NBA Summer League to the Rockets. The Spurs blew an 18-point lead to Thomas and Mac Arena. That despite the fact Spurs' first-round pick at number 20, Malachi Branham, had his best game yet at 20 points, but he also had six rebounds, two assists, and two steals right behind him. Another first-round pick at number 25 overall, Blake Wesley, 14 points, six rebounds, four assists, and three steals. But the third overall pick in the draft, the Rockets' Jabari Smith, scored 19 points, nine rebounds, 97-80 for loss to the Spurs. It's feeling, it's feeling good. You know, I still got to be more consistent. Um, but I, I feel good about myself. I definitely got to put on some muscle. Um, you know, I've been working with the strength coach, and we've been lifting when we didn't. We don't have no, no practice or no game. So tomorrow I'm going to get in the weight room and, you know, get big. All right, next up, the Hawks. That will be on Thursday at 2 p.m. Speaking of the Hawks, here is our newest member of the team, former Spurs point guard DeJounte Murray, who's coming off his all-star season, traded to Atlanta for three first-round picks. DeJounte couldn't thank the silver and black enough for placing him on a team that could contend for the NBA title now. 
that's the Spurs organization. You know, they're first class, and, and you know, I think, like I said, me and Pop, it was an agreement, and you know, they just want the best for Dejounte, and, and that's something that you got to respect. You know, have a lot of respect for organization. You know, because I feel like that's rare, and uh, for them to send me somewhere where I wanted to go at that, you know, uh, speaks volumes. Former Spurs guard and four-time NBA champion Tony Parker was in Las Vegas again last night for the Spurs game against the Rockets. Turns out he's scouting for his team in France as well. He was asked if he could recall his first summer league game after the Spurs drafted him 28th overall in the 2001 NBA draft. My first summer league game, I remember I was with Mike Brown, <laughs> who's with the Warriors now, and I was looking in the stands during warm-up, and I was like, where's Coach Pop? <laughs> and, I, and I went to Mike Brown, I was like, where's Coach Pop? I'm like, he's not here? And Mike Brown was like, oh, you know, Pop doesn't come to summer league. And I was like, man, I was like kind of mad because I was like, if I have a chance to be a point guard for the Spurs, I need the head coach to see me play. So I remember my first game, I scored 29 points. And I was like, second game, I look and he was right there. Coach Pop was there. So I joked with uh, Mike Brown. I was like, oh, now he's coming. <laughs> Apparently, the Utah Jazz's Donovan Mitchell is not untouchable after all when it comes to trade talks. According to ESPN, it says the Jazz are willing to listen to teams about possible deals for their franchise's most valuable player, especially after the Jazz have already traded away Rudy Gobert to the Minnesota Timberwolves for five first-round picks and five players. So you can only imagine what Mitchell would bring after averaging almost 25 points a game and still has four years, $135 million left on his contract. Remember, Quinn Snyder resigned as head coach even though the Jazz made the playoffs the past six seasons, but were surprisingly eliminated by the Dallas Mavs in the first round. Now their new head coach is Will Hardy, the former assistant coach of the Spurs. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans today unveiled their new battle red helmet to be worn during the upcoming 2022 season. It will make its debut when the Texans host the Philadelphia Eagles on Battle Red Day, November the 3rd at NRG Stadium during the regular season. But if you'd like to get a sneak peek, the Texans will wear them on July 30th at their training camp. Former Dallas Cowboys running back Marion Barber died of heat stroke. That is according to police in the Dallas suburb of Frisco after the medical examiner ruled his death and accident. Police were called to Barber's apartment when water leaked through a neighbor's ceiling. When they made entry, they found the apartment temperature at 91 degrees with the hot water running in the bathtub. Barber liked to work out in sauna-like conditions. Barber played for the Cowboys for six seasons after being drafted in the fourth round by the Cowboys in 2005. After having a much-deserved weekend off, San Antonio FC resumes play in the United Soccer League this Saturday when they host Atlanta United at 8 p.m. in Toyota Field. SAFC is still <clears throat> number one in the Western Conference, four points ahead of Colorado Switchbacks FC, taking on an Atlanta club that is struggling this season. First place. Oh, very important, yeah. Uh, we did an excellent first half of the, of the league and, and now... We had to, to push, to continue pushing and stay there. Uh, we're just using a recipe that we're taught in, in, in our team identity and um, just, you know, trying to get put our best foot forward in every game. Jesse Bam Rodriguez will be on the fight card when Canelo Alvarez faces off against Triple G in their third bout together this September. Rodriguez will defend his WBC World Super Flyweight title against Israel Gonzalez as part of the trilogy clash set for Saturday, September the 17th at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. And get this, Bam Rodriguez will be the co-main feature, meaning he will defend his title before Canelo and Triple G fight. So that is a lot of national exposure for that young man. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Greg. You got it. We'll be right back. So there's a new competition for San Antonio. San Antonio Pets Alive is fundraising with a pet photo contest. <laughs> and the person with the most votes for their photo is going to get their pet's photo on limited edition Alamo Beer Company can. The brewery is planning to create 100 cans with the winning pet. If you want to compete, we have all those details for you on KSET.com. Just look for this article. Used to have a beagle that liked to drink beer. She would have been perfect for that. <laughs> Cute. No longer with us. There are some lingering thunder showers in southern Edwards County and near Fredericksburg, but those are coming to an end. 104 tomorrow for the high temperature. Only stray showers and storms here and there over the coming days. Otherwise, it's going to be hot. All right. Thank you. And thank you so much. That does it for the night beat. Don't forget that Good Morning San Antonio starts at 430. Good night. <laughs>